in this Debaco University video, I'm going to be going over the electron shielding effect, which is basically how electrons interact with one another in the central nucleus as far as charges go and orbital levels and how they all interact. Right, the shielding effect is also called the screening effect, and it describes how inner electrons in an atom reduce the effective nuclear charge experienced by outer electrons. And this affects their behavior in the atom's properties, including electron configuration, stability, and magnetism. And as we see here, the inner electrons are shielding outer electrons from the nucleus. So the blue lines represent repulsion, the red lines represent attraction, we've got our inner electrons, our outer electrons, and our nucleus. So we can see how these electrons are attracted to the positive charge of the nucleus and repelled from one another. So we've got this whole interaction occurring in three-dimensional space, and this is causing the shielding effect with those electrons as relates to the positive force of the nucleus. So this subatomic particle interaction that's going on here, we're kind of zoomed in on a portion. Inner electrons, like the 1s, 2s, and 2p, repel outer electrons and weakens the pull that the nucleus has on those outer electrons. This results in outer electrons are less tightly held and more energetic. So you can essentially have those inner electrons shielding or blocking the positive charge of that nucleus to those outer electrons. So you've got that kind of reduction in charge, and this is what's called that shielding effect. These inner electrons are interrupting that direct connection between the negative charge of the outer electrons and the inner charge of the positive nucleus. So when we, how it relates to electron configuration is electrons fill orbitals from low to high energy. Some orbitals, like 4s, can end up being lower in energy than 3d, so they get filled first due to shielding. This is where if you follow that little cheat sheet that I provide you with, kind of a way to help you organize yourself, this um, plays into that situation perfectly. And we're seeing here it also represented that the 4s, uh, for example, we look at iron down here, that 4s does fill before that 3d, simply because um, it's the first in the sequence, and we're looking at those energy uh, in, in relation. The 4s is a lower energy level than the 3d, which is why when we're writing things out, it doesn't go 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, and right the way up, that 4s comes before that 3d. And that's because of the energy level that's corresponding to that due to the shielding effect. Now, connection to stability. Atoms become more stable when they have full outer shells or half full sublevels. Shielding helps this by making it energetically favorable for electrons to settle into these configurations. Neon has a full second energy level, as we can see right here with the 2s2 and the 2p6, therefore it is very stable. Manganese, Mn, has a half filled 3d uh, 3d5, which is also very stable. Here we see they're unpaired, but each one has at least one electron in it, increasing that stability. We can see it's got a plus two charge, which is why it takes on that positive cation charge, because it increases the stability. Now, how does this relate to magnetism as the last part here? If electrons are unpaired, like in iron, cobalt, or nickel, shielding lets them move more freely and align their spins. This creates magnetic properties, and in contrast to atoms like zinc that have all electrons paired, there's basically no net magnetism called diamagnetic. So as a result here, we're looking and seeing uh, this visual representation, and therefore by just looking at those electron configurations and knowing this shielding effect, we can infer what's going to have greater or less magnetic properties. All of this comes due to that shielding effect.